We continue following that breaking news from Hardin County where a man was found dead at the Lone Star Indoor Gun Range. This is just south of Lumberton along the highway. Investigators say he died in a shooting that appears to simply be a tragic accident. Hardin County Sheriff Mark Davis confirmed that this was not a workplace violence situation and there is no shooter on the run. 12 News reporter Amelia White has been on the scene and she's joining us with an update on this investigation. The Hardin County Sheriff's Department is calling this a tragic accident. This afternoon, they were called out to the Lone Star Indoor Gun Range around 2.30. This is where employees found a man dead in his shooting lane. Here's what we know. The victim is a man in his 60s. When deputies arrived at the range off of Highway 69, the victim was alone in his booth. He died from a gunshot wound. Now police are questioning if it was a user error or a malfunction. Uh, there was nobody else around. Um, as you can imagine, the gun range is set up with individual areas for people to stand and target practice. We do know that he was alone at the time. Sheriff Davis says they're looking into getting surveillance video from the business in hopes of piecing together what happened. Officials are still in the early stages of the investigation, so we'll keep you updated on air and online as we learn more. In Hardin County, Amelia White, 12 News. Appreciate the update, Amelia, and we're also following more breaking news tonight, this time out of Austin. Governor Greg Abbott has signed a disaster declaration. It's aimed at 15 counties along the border, and this is in response to what he calls a border crisis. The governor taking aim at President Biden as he bolsters Texas DPS and other state agencies to enforce all federal and state criminal laws. This is when it comes to what he calls criminal trespassing, smuggling, and human trafficking. Abbott had this to say. By declaring a state of disaster in these counties, Texas will have more resources and strategies at our disposal to protect landowners and enforce all federal and state laws to combat criminal activities stemming from the border crisis. Our 12 News Storm Trackers keeping tabs on your soggy forecast. Yes, as you look out live, we're getting a break tonight and folks, we may stay dry as well tomorrow. Every bit of dry weather helps at this point. You got that right, Jordan. Chief Meteorologist Patrick Vaughn is joining us. And Patrick, what are you thinking about tonight into tomorrow? Well, we're watching a weak front uh, that may make it to the coast coming up by uh, tomorrow morning, and that uh, could really uh, put a damper on rain chances tomorrow. But as you can see, showers on going up towards the lakes area. That's where they've been mainly confined. A few showers here in the Triangle, but as you can see, not uh, expecting severe weather. Temperatures have cooled in the mid 70s lakes, lower 80s in the Triangle. A lot of cloud cover across the area today, and that may have limited the uh, rain chances that we've seen uh, for today. As you can see, the best chances up uh, towards the lakes area overnight. And uh, for this evening in the Triangle, slim chances as temperatures fall into the mid 70s. And if that front goes to the coast, a little drier air may filter down here. So I've reduced rain chances to only 40% coverage in the Triangle for tomorrow. But then they go up, and we'll talk about our hefty rain chances in just a few minutes. Thank you, Patrick. Today is the start of hurricane season, and if the forecasts are accurate, it could be another busy year. Here's a look at two predictions side by side. NOAA there on the left, Colorado State University on the right. The CSU researchers predicting 17 named storms. That's three more than the 10-year average. Eight of them could become hurricanes, and four of them could become major hurricanes. My goodness, and we just cannot talk hurricane season without mentioning the flooding. It's been two weeks since the storm dumped 15 inches of rain in Finette. That was in less than 24 hours. Hard to believe, and tonight a Jefferson County Commissioner will be holding a meeting to talk about the concerns of people who say they're more than over all this. It's really heartbreaking, you know, to go through this again, and I don't think it's gonna stop. So the water is gone, but uh, the damage is done. And this is the third time in four years. It's testimonies like that that we expect to hear more of tonight. 12 News investigator Leticia Kehi joins us with a preview. Yeah, thanks, Jordan. Those are just some of the heartbreaking stories of people losing everything thanks to flooding. And with hurricane season upon us, people are concerned. And that concern led to someone in Finette reaching out to Jefferson County Commissioner Bo Alfred, who agreed to meet with folks to see what can be done to fix the ongoing problem in Finette. Now, this video is video from about two weeks ago when that 15 inches of rain drenched Finette. It damaged homes and businesses. And unfortunately, the area didn't meet the threshold for FEMA assistance to rebuild. The flooding and lack of assistance has caused some people to consider leaving their homes behind. Now, Jefferson County Judge Jeff Brannick addressed the flooding a couple weeks after the most recent storm. There have been a lot of improvements that have been made over the last 20 years to the drainage systems in Jefferson County, but 
you know, we've seen historic rainfalls that, that we hadn't really experienced before 2017. One resident posting they don't care who's to blame, they just want resolution. So what's next and how will this problem be fixed? Tonight, Finette residents were invited to meet with Commissioner Bo Alfred in the hopes of getting some of these questions answered. And you still have time to make it to this meeting. It will start at 630 at the Precinct 4 building in Cheek. Our Amelia White will be attending and we'll have an update at 10. For now, Letitia Cahey, 12 News. Thanks so much, Letitia. And stick with 12 News throughout hurricane season. This Friday, we're airing a special report at 630, taking a closer look at the 2021 season forecast. That's getting an update on the areas hit hardest from Hurricane Laura and a lot more. Developing tonight, it's been nearly a month since a six-year-old in Beaumont was hit and killed by an ATV at Terrell Park. Tonight, his family's cries for justice are growing louder. They've already started a petition to get the ATV laws changed. And today, Carter Osborne's family, along with activist Quinnell X, held a press conference at the park. 12 News anchor Sharday Lorraine has their message tonight. Thank you, Dej. 11 days, that's how long Taylor Osborne says it took a Beaumont police detective to ask her questions regarding her son's tragic death. Now, last month, six-year-old Carter Osborne was fatally struck by an ATV at Terrell Park. Today, Carter's family and activist Quinnell X held a press conference at the park demanding justice and calling for BPD to arrest the man who was driving the ATV. According to police, Beaumont police, the driver accused of hitting Carter was arrested on outstanding warrants that are not related to Carter's death. The Osborne family says that's not enough and they believe Beaumont police are mishandling the case. Quanell X says the man driving the ATV initially fled the park after the crash and police had to bring him back to the scene. Now during this press conference today, Carter's mom said she's been patient long enough and BPD needs to do more to bring justice for her son. You tell me be patient because of COVID. Be patient because there's 19 more just like this one. Mm. I'm left here to deal with everything under the sun, everything under the sun. And I just can't believe and fathom for the life of me how this man has not been charged. Now we reached out to Beaumont police for comment and police chief Jim Singletary tells us that they are investigating the case and the man driving the ATV is still in Jefferson County Correctional Facility on unrelated charges. Now he also sent us a statement saying in part, this is a very important case to us. We have a large number of people to interview and we will not rush this case because of outside influences, end quote. Now so far more than 2,800 people have signed the petition. Carter's mom created on change.org. It aims to ban ATVs in public places, mandate liability insurance, policies for owners and riders, among other safety precautions. For now, I'll send it back to you and Jordan.